Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. About four to five topics for this video. Why between four and five? Because you can um, uh, be in the same topic but a little bit a different nuance. So um, let's see what's going on over here. We have Germany and Germany they think they are preparing for a possible war with Russia by 2029. If you think that by 2029 you're gonna be in a war with Russia, that means you have a plan. Otherwise, you could not... Why? Because you can control your actions, but you cannot control the Russians' actions. So why, why do you think it's 2029? You prepare for it by 2029, possible war. What, why, what makes you think that the Russians don't, I don't know, have a plan to attack you yesterday? All right, so Germany, you can't prepare for war against Russia in any way. Why? You don't have nuclear weapons. You have other countries' nuclear weapons deployed on your territory. Why? Because you're a vassal state and you're not sovereign and independent. But hey, that's a different story. But to fight them, what? Face to face, one on one? You want the Second World War Part 2 or something? All right, let's read this article, but this is the first topic. Let's go to the next topic. A uh, drone, an American drone, provoked, according to the Russians, a uh, Suhoi 35 in Syria, together with the coalition forces. So in Syria, remember, there are so-called coalition forces who defend, I don't know exactly what, not called by the legitimate authorities of Syria, and they are stationed on the most, the richest part of Syria, which is northeast and they have oil over there, 90% of that. But hey, we are over there uninvited, that's occupation, and we're not violating anything, nothing. We just promote democracy. But nobody else can promote democracy the way we do it. If the Russians want to promote democracy, let's say in Florida, they can't do it, right? Or let's say, I don't know, some garbage, uh, let's say New York. All right, next, um, next topic is related to a contradiction. A contradiction between the Russian military capabilities and the lack of. So we have three articles here in which the Western media claims that, um, claim that Russia has no ammunition, has no weapons, their weapons, the arms, the military sucks, but they are getting ready by 2029 with, for a possible war with Russia. Remember that one. And they tell us that Russia cannot conduct another offensive. We have two articles in which they actually challenge that by saying the opposite. Actually, the big bad wolf or bear <laughs> bounced back. That's why we have to get ready for a war. So that is the little debate on who's lying here. All right. And then uh, we have uh, a hi hypocritical statement coming from Scholz who applies certain rules to himself or to his side, but the same rules are not valid for the other side and vice versa. Doing the same thing. And the last article here, the last topic, Ukraine and Romania sign security deal. Now remember, Ukraine has Romanian territories in its, within its territory, within its country. Uh, and I could mention, for instance, uh, Basarabia, Bukovina, Insula Sherpilor, which is the uh, Snake Island. Those are Romanian territories. But we, we, the guys who were told by the boss, hey, kids, you're going to make a security deal because I say so, they sign a security deal. You can say, well, in a way, it makes sense because, you know, you can, um, you can um, defend your territory. No, 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 no. You're defending the Ukrainians against someone that they also have territory from. Uh, they have territories from the Hungarians, they have territories from Pol Poles, they have territories from the Russians, they have territories from Romania. But hey, this is Ukraine. What's the uh, translation of Ukraine? At the edge of something. Something at the edge over there, something, you know? Um, right, the periphery of something. And now it's a big country. How in the fuck are a big country? I tell you how given this, given that, by the evil Soviets, Stalin, non-Russian, and Khrushchev, 
uh, I think he is half Ukrainian, and the Second World War, the free world also gave these guys that. Now, let's start with the beginning, right? Germany prepares for possible war with Russia by 2029. They have nuclear weapons that will fuck you up, that's just like this. They will not have patience with you. Citing a statement from the German Chief of Defense, Karsten Breuer, or Breuer, but it's not a double uh, points over there, the report suggests that Berlin fears that by 2029 conditions will be optimal for a direct Russian attack on NATO. This scare tactic, or at least tell me when these guys reported something that was accurate. They kind of, not kind of, usually see something in the future, like the global warming, for instance, right? By in 10 years, the waters will be, I don't know how. They never come back and arrest those guys who lied and scared the shit out of us. Because it's like I say, guys, tomorrow is the end of the world. Everybody panics. The same thing with, is with the global warming. It's a panic that never or so far doesn't come true. You know why? Because they put the goalpost so far away that... They will not be alive when that happens, or when they, that, 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 or when they said it's going to happen. Look at, for instance, that uh, uh, Gore, Al Gore, with his un unconvenient truth. To go and listen to that one. He should be arrested for ca causing panic to the world. No, he's held at high esteem, and John Kerry and other garbages like that. You should mark by the end 2022 in your calendar, Breuer said during a speech at the military academy. So that means you know, that means you're going to attack them by 2029 because you don't know when they're going to attack you. So it sounds like so, sounds to me like it's an arranged thing. It's someone arranged controls this or what? And Germany, how are you going to prepare? Some pussified society turn it into warriors to go berserk or something? You're not going to uh, do that. Why? Because the guys inside of your country, yes, those traitors, they pussified you. They cut, snipped your bowls in the 9th of May, 1945, and since they, they beat you down with guilt that you should not have. But hey, those are traitors. Traitors, foreign traitors, and domestic traitors. Move on. Sputnik. This is from two hours ago, today on the 13th of July. U.S.-led coalition's MQ-9 Reaper drone made dangerously close approach to Russian Suhoi-35 in Syria. The Russians are legally stationed in Syria because they were invited by the legitimate government of Syria. Why is it legitimate? Recognized by the nations. But the Americans and the rest of the coalition is not legitimately uh, legally staying over there. They're violating their territorial sovereignty, the one that they're telling us that we should defend against the evil Russians who violated the Ukrainian territory with Russian-speaking population and territories historically Russian. All right, let's see what's going on here. The MQ-9 Reaper drone of the US-led coalition approached a Russian Suhoi-35 aircraft dangerously close while performing a scheduled flight over Syria's Homs province, says Oleg Isnasyuk, deputy head of the Russian Center of Reconciliation of opposing sides. Opposing sides. Now, in the area of the village of Papa Papi, Pipi, a dangerous proximity occurred between a coalition MQ-9 Reaper UAV performing a scheduled flight in Syrian Syrian airspace and a Russian airspace force. Forces Suhoi-35 aircraft, the Russian pilot, demonstrated high professionalism, taking timely measures to prevent a collision. I don't call that professionalism. My professionalism would have been ordered to shoot. Yeah, boom. That's what I would have called. Professionalism in that case, when someone comes close to you, you avoid the garbage not to hit you. How about you down the garbage approaching you? If that's true. Remember, this comes from the Russians. Now, additionally, in the Al Tanf area, there were 12 recorded violations in one day involving a pair of F-15, a pair of Rafale, that's French, fighters, two pairs of Typhoon, the Brits, fighters, and two pairs of A-10 American attack aircraft of the coalition illegally occupying a sovereign country's territory. Got that? All right, let's move on. Garbage. Now, let's see how the Russians are not making enough ammunition and then don't have troops to fight. And I will tell you, 
I will dis uh, disprove that with their, with their own articles and with some evidence. Reuters, this is from three days ago. Russia lacks ammunition, troops for big Ukraine offensive, says NATO official. That's the first one. Second one, the new voice of Ukraine, three days ago. Russia lacks reserves for major offensive, NATO estimates. And um, we have the Telegraph, Russia from three days ago. They're all like an order. Or they pick from one another, from the ones that lead and then everybody else uh, you know, takes the same shit, chews it a little bit and then spits it out and we are, uh, all right. Russia, quote unquote, unlikely to take much more territory in Ukraine. Uh, let's see who said that, the NATO guy? US officials have said, when were they right last? I don't remember. But anyway, they keep saying, they keep saying, they keep saying, the Russians are attacking us, the Russians are attacking us. They're not. Oh, the Russians will invade us, the Russians will conquer us, the Russians will take Europe. When? Uh, when we die so you can come back and hang us, I'm guessing. Anyway, so they say they, they lack reserves. All right. If Russia tomorrow institutes a full mobilization, they will have about 30, 30 million people ready to go and fight. So they have reserves. So off. That's my first point. The second one, we're going to go to an article coming from, let's put it this way, from Business Insider. And this is from uh, three days ago as well. Russia rebuilt, past tense, its war machine, and I'm quoting, faster than we expected and is now, three days ago, cranking out artillery shells at a breakneck pace, NATO defense official says. Do you understand that? So the Russians, not only they don't lack reserves, they don't lack, lack artillery shells and uh, the war machine is already back. So who's lying here? All. That's the uh, short answer. They all lie. And then we got the other article coming from DPA International. And this is about how certain things apply to you only, but when the same thing is reversed, they don't, it doesn't apply to us. DPA International, International one day ago, Scholz said that, tarred chancellor, Europe faces threat from, and I'm quoting, incredible arms buildup by Russia. Hey, weren't the other three articles saying that Russia lacks ammunition, troops too big, pop up, Russia lacks reserves for major, major offensive, and the other one was Russia unlikely to take much more territory in Ukraine. How is that sitting with this statement, Scholz? incredible arms build up by Russia. Okay, so why is Europe facing threat? Because another country builds arms? Okay, if that's bad and you feel that there's a threat, why weren't the Russians entitled to feel the same way when NATO kept moving towards it with weapons and ammunition and countries and they got to Europe, to Europe, to, to Ukraine? NATO troops were over there. Americans, CIA was over there. They want to be in NATO. So why are you entitled, entitled to feel threatened by something that you have done? Not Germany per se. Germany is, right? But your guys did, I don't know, two years and a half, two, two, three years and a half. And remember what the Russians wanted to do then. They wanted to talk to you. They wanted, how is that? Uh, law binding guarantees. Sign, you know, law binding guarantees that you guys and the Russians were at that point. I wouldn't have believed squat at that point. You, a paper? <laughs> Wipe your ass and throw it in his face. That's what you do with a paper. What are you gonna do? How, how, many, how many things were just violated? The Minsk agreement was violated by whom? One guy said, I don't like anything that's in the Minsk agreement. Why should I follow it? And that was Zelensky, Stein. So again, if that's true for you that you feel threatened by the Russians military because it's a build-up, they didn't come towards you. Like you, NATO, went towards them, advanced towards them. Look on the map and see where the NATO was when the Warsaw Pact was and when right now NATO is. And you tell me that uh, you should not, uh, you know, it's okay. You know why? Because that's the way the gig is ran. I'm the good one. And if I come towards you, you should not feel threatened. But I say that you are the bad one. And when you come towards me in the same way, I should feel threatened. Why? Because somehow I am the uh, holder and interpreter of truth. 
I dictate how things are. I say who's good and who's bad based on me. And I ignore everything that runs against or challenging that uh, point that I'm trying to make. And let's go to the last uh, article. And that is the new voice of Ukraine one day ago, Ukraine, Romania signed security deal. So let's see what they say over there. And we have two traitors. <laughs> I will show you, man. Uh, you can call them maybe not traitors, but I have suspicions here big time. Right here, this is a Jew and a German. Right? But the German is Romanian and the Jew is Ukrainian. All right? That's the way we are supposed to think. Only in the matter pertaining to us. All right? Not to, not to um, other countries. You can't ask for that, let's say, in Israel. No, you can't. You can't have an Iranian prime minister or president. That, that the German, Klaus Johannes, that's a German. And the other one is Zelensky Stein Volodymyr by name. All right? So these are the guys who signed for the countries, their countries, what, who, what countries ever they are. And we have here this. Let's go. Brandon. So let's read this thing a little bit. What does it mean? It's for 20 years or so. According to the document, they were all ordered by the master, you do this, and they did it. According to the document, Romania will donate another Patriot 1 uh, missile defense system to Ukraine and facilitate expedite, pay attention to this one, expedite transit all, of all necessary equipment through its territory to Ukraine. But the Russians cannot hit Romania, facilitating the transfer of weapons for Ukraine to kill Russians, the invaders. No, no, the Russians cannot. We're, we are not participants. Romania says, we're not participants. Well, I think you are. Romania will also, this is more important, will assist Ukraine with demining the Black Sea and providing support through EU and NATO institutions. In addition, Romania has cement, cemented its commitment to help train Ukrainian F-16 pilots, which I don't think they're, they're trained, but uh, I think NATO pilots will really fly them somewhere in the west of Ukraine. They will not be in the war zone. They will report that they were, and they did this and that, but I don't think they will come close. Why? Because they will be shut down and it's going to be embarrassing. At a new training center on its soil, the agreement also outlines a, and this is the most important thing, outlines a 24 hour, 24 hours, two days, em two days, Jesus Christ, <laughs> one day, emergency aid request and response procedure from Romania in the event of renewed Russian aggression against Ukraine or a significant escalation in the current war. What is an emergency aid request and response procedure? What do you think that is? You come with your troops. Can I interpret it that way? 100% I can. So it outlines a 24-hour emergency aid request and response procedure from Romania in event that renewed Russian aggression against Ukraine or a significant escalation in the current war. So if the Russians are escalating the war, let's say they're winning, Romanians say, we come in, emergency, 24 hours, two days. <laughs> All right, my friends? That's what it is. Romania, great job. And Mr. Klaus Johannes, the Romanian, with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, Stein, <clears throat> the Ukrainian, they did for their countries. And the people go to fight for these guys who are at the... Uh, help of other interests. That's how I see it. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.